Hello, God bless you, and welcome to the Joppa Jazz Show. I'm your host, Dr. Alvin McKinney, also known as the Prime Minister of Joppa Jazz. And once again, we are, uh, we are here in Los Angeles, recording live from Roscoe's Media Center. And today our special guest is Mr. Grant Malloy Smith, and he is a an American roots vocalist, composer, and artist. But before, but before, uh, before we bring him up, a quick word of prayer. Gracious. Blessed divine Heavenly Father, holy Lord God Almighty, in the mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yahashua, Yeshua Mashiach, the Son of the living God's name. Lord, this day we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity to be here today, to be a blessing, and to present another one of your children, one of your artists, to the world. I pray that, above all things, let your perfect blessed divine will be done. In Christ's holy name, amen. In case you're just tuning in, once again, you're listening to the Joppa Jazz Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Alvin McKinney. And uh, today, I'm once again on board, Brother Laurent. Thank you, sir. I was a pleasure in working with you. Always a pleasure, too. Amen. <laughs> uh, I'd like to, first of all, uh, thank and, uh, Mr. Herb Hudson, Mr. Johnny Morris, my Uncle Johnny here, and also Mrs. Crystal Wells. Thank you for your support of the, of the Joppa Jazz Show. And our sponsor is Titbull Energy Drinks, and you'll hear from them, hear from, hear from them later. Now, uh, I'm back by God's grace from uh, Dubai. I had, I had a wonderful time, and it was just amazing what I saw there. It was a, re a revival called the International Gathering of Firebrands, and the pastor, Ade Adjudikun, a Nigerian pastor who lives there, uh, invited me to ministry music there. And by God's grace, out of one of the eight artists who was actually on the more Cerullo World Evangelism platform in, in uh, Chicago in 2013, the Holy Spirit put it on his heart for him to contact me, so I'm honored and grateful for that opportunity. I had a wonderful time. And by God's grace, I also made it back home safely. Amen? Amen. Now, this is some great music. This is new territory for me, but I, I've, I truly enjoy this music, and it's once again called American Roots Music. And so I'm going to have uh, Mr. Smith talk a little, a little bit about that more later. But before we get started, let's hear one of his tracks from his CD entitled Yellow Trailer. And this is track number five, and it's entitled How Long Does the Woman Have to Wait? I hope that you can touch you into this this track and, and he'll talk about, about that, including his relationship with God. She was barely twenty, but so pretty that it ached. Long hair and longer stairs followed in her wake. He was fixing cars and pumping gas out in the rain Not the best provider, but she loved him all the same They dreamed of babies and a house out on Route 9 They talked and talked until she thought she'd lose her mind When it's too late He was north of 40 There were stories on his face Cleft chin, crooked grin He fell out of grace She had given up Until her shopping cart found his Not the most romantic place But keep it is, kid They started talking And they themselves in love The bells were ringing But that boy couldn't wake up How long Does a woman have to wait Till she has to wait I'm like a saint to wait and wait For what is mine How long Does a woman have to wait Till she has to wait That boy had better hurry up Or he'll find out When it's too late
That mo it better hurry up or he'll find out. That's a great track. Uh, once again, that was called How Long Does the Woman Have to Wait? That's <laughs> a good question. From the CD uh, Yellow Trailer <laughs> by Mr. Grant Malloy. So, so having said that, Mr. Grant Malloy Smith, welcome to the Joe for Death Show. Oh, thank you so much, Doc. <laughs> I appreciate it. And thanks to all your listeners for uh, indulging indulging me here. Oh, uh, listen, it's our, and, our, and our pleasure. And just so you know, for all of your, uh, for all of your fo- followers and fans, the Joe for Jazz Show here, we uh, feature artists of all faiths of light in every music genre. So this is, you are our first uh, uh, um, American Roots artist. First this, this hat, first, first cowboy the, hat on the, the show, the maybe? First, the first cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> but God bless you. And I was just say howdy. Too, I, did, you. Howdy, yeah. Did they still say, say howdy down there? Howdy, y'all. y'all I still say y'all because I'm from Memphis. There you go. <laughs> That's the South. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, let's, but before we get into your music, let's just start here. I always ask all of my Christian artists and even other spiritual artists of other faiths to tell us about your relationship with God. Uh, and the purpose is being for people who may not know God that are listening mm-hmm. to hopefully find God in some way. Yeah. Now, personally, I'm a Christian. If they ask me, I say Christ is, is the way, you know, according to the Word of God. But there are other religions, so I respect that. Because spiritual people, we don't argue about God. We, we, we uh, trade information, we trade experiences, right. and we learn from one another. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I, for me, um, I think... There's, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today, and there's a lot of really bad stuff happening. Yes. I don't want to get so heavy right early in the show here, That's but right. I think fundamentally the problem is a lack of forgiveness. That's and if people don't forgive, if they're not willing to forgive and let go of things that they feel wronged about, mm-hmm. that's going to lead to what we see today at the smallest level and then, of course, at this global level like, yes. like we saw last Friday night and yes. that kind of stuff. You, you've got to forgive. You know, they had, the, remember the troubles in Northern Ireland? It's because both sides were against each other and they wouldn't forgive. And mm-hmm. finally they got over that. And it's been pretty good for the last 10 years. Yeah. It's all about forgiveness. And for me, <clears throat> forgiveness, tolerance, peace, love, these are all things that I try to express in my, in my art. And before I was a musician, I was an art, like a painter kind of artist, okay. graphical artist. Right. And... Uh, at the beginning, I did. Lo- I did. I took lots of like the like the great artists, not me, but the great artists. <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to the great ones, but they they did lots of uh, you know religious works. That's how they yes. mostly got paid. But yes. the church was their was their sponsor and patron, and that's how they right. that's how they made a living. Otherwise, they would be starving. So um, I did some of that too, and I really enjoyed that. I did one time. I did this enormous six foot tall painting of um, Jesus sitting on the rock in the garden. Oh, wonderful! And uh, that was fun. But I. I think through art you can express uh, God. You can re- you can express tolerance and love. Mm-hmm. You can also receive it. Yeah. Through art of all kinds, music, painting, sculpture, poetry, what, whatever it is. So yeah. I try to be some kind of conveyor for that. Yes. I'll, I'll, having said that, I want to thank you for being a light bearer in the world. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to maybe uh, just add a footnote to what you just said regarding forgiveness, because the underlying energy under that we're going to call anger mm-hmm. and after the Lord has delivered me from 25 years of anger uh, I can better appreciate what, what you just said because anger really blinds you yes I don't, it's not just an emotion it's a spirit right it blocks you from doing the right thing yes. and acting the right way and being a light for others right and it also gives you an, a false illusion of something that was not really maybe what it was and so, but you see it from that perspective through those lenses of being at, mm-hmm. being, being angry. Sure. And so, because of that, we tend to re- react in the flesh, and then it, it snowballs. Yeah. And if it keeps snowballing, then at the end of that, something uh, drastic is going to happen. Sometimes it could even cause, you know, death or, or calamity. You know. Yes. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. So thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, also uh, as a musician, uh, as artist, uh, I would say that in some way we are we are also healers. Music changes uh, attitudes and perspectives really of does. people. It changes it their moods. 
does. It's a wonderful gift that God has given us, and we have to be responsible for that. Yeah. <laughs> and it transcends language, too. Language can be a barrier. If you don't speak someone's language, you can't talk to them directly. But I've seen it over and over again where people communicate by music, and this is, I think, a well-known phenomenon. It's not mm -hmm. just me that noticed it. It's been noticed for centuries now that it's this kind of common language that, that binds people together. Yes, yes. And, uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy, like, uh, for example, I was in Europe, uh, well, this year, but also last year, and I was in Budapest last year, and mm -hmm. I saw some, some, like, there was a street musician, mm -hmm. and he wasn't very good at playing the violin, but he was trying. Mm -hmm. And this guy was rollerblading, and he came around, and he, and he didn't, he was an older guy, and he, and he just circled the guy a little bit, and then finally he approached him and asked if he could borrow his violin. And the guy handed it to him, and this guy started playing. He must have been the first violinist at the Budapest Symphony Orchestra because it was unbelievable what he was playing. <laughs> and then he handed it back to the guy, and the guy looked at the violin like, "No, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> this thing? He didn't do you that when I played it. Can't make it sound like that." <laughs> but these guys didn't speak the same language at all. But they, they, and all the people that cir encircled them, like me, <laughs> were just flabbergasted. And, it, and that's a big international city, and so. Probably there was Americans and British people and French, you know, people from all over Europe and mm -hmm. everywhere, who were just listening and transfixed by this by this thing that happened there. And you see that all over the place. Music has power. <laughs> oh, definitely it has power to heal the world. I think if we would only let it do that. You're right about that. Um, the Lord actually gave me a divine assignment uh, that I'm not allowed to share, but I'll just say that if we can come together as musicians. We can actually attack the words of evil together mm. through, through through the light by whatever mm. name that you go by God, because mm -hmm. God has at least 365 names that I know of. <laughs> I have my little roll call in the morning. It takes me 10 or 15 minutes to get, <laughs> get through those names. You know, and I'm still learning <laughs> more names. But each name uh, uh, has a different responsibility. Mm. And I'm learning that God is e even the breath that we breathe. So how can you deny that God is not, you know, for mm. those that... Uh, I'll, I'll go here, and I'm, I'm not going to start on my soapbox today. <laughs> but uh, let's say that your life has been threatened. You're not going to call on uh, the, the Easter Bunny. You're not going to call on Santa. <laughs> You're not going to call on any jack o mm. <laughs> You'll say, oh, God. <laughs> Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the ultimate 911 right there. Amen. That's the ultimate 911. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, listen, let's, let's go here. Um, we had just to chat a little bit outside the studio before the program started. Yeah. Uh, for those who may not know, like myself, please explain to us the difference between uh, American roots, country western, uh, bluegrass, mm -hmm. et cetera. Sure. Well, they all kind of came from the same place originally. Mm -hmm. You know, the people from the British Isles mostly came over here hundreds of years ago, and they brought their folk music with them, what they played, for fun. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, music of the people really folk, folk music so songs about real things you know mm -hmm. and some were funny some are not some are serious some are sad but that's the typical folk music when it got here of course it spread out across our big country mm -hmm. and it took different forms and it started to mutate like like music does everywhere it goes and it and this kind of what we call roots music then uh, you know morphed into country music in the american south mm -hmm. and and uh and it also morphed into bluegrass which is more of a rhythmic version it's it's typified bluegrass is ty typified by very repetitive beat uh like a boom chuck beat you know doom da doom da doom da doom, okay. and lots of syncopated uh -huh. stringed instruments being played fiddles right. mandolins banjos of course guitars all that stuff mm -hmm. country took more of a verse chorus turn and less of a one verse all the way through for five minutes kind of a thing uh -huh. but fundamentally at their core, they're the same, but they just became commercially very, very different from each other. Also, out of that original roots mix came folk music, mm -hmm. you know, our original folk music. Right. Uh, and of course, all kinds of other collisions happened, you know, in the, in the 40s and 50s. Blues, American blues, which mostly came out of the, the Mississippi River, where you're from, all the way, all the way up from New Orleans, all, all the way up to Chicago, exactly. and of course, right Memphis, right, right in the middle right, there. Right. Um, that kind of collided and mixed in with country music and became rock and roll, the early rock and roll from the 40, late 40s and 50s, of course. All right. So now, having said that, that, that would be sort of like the uh, Elvis and uh, Little Richard. You sure? That whole, all that. Jerry Lee Lewis, wow. and even before them. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for that, for that bit of history. I'm, I'm always <laughs> learning something. <laughs> Tell you what, let's, let's, I'm going to listen to another one of your tracks and we'll talk a little bit more about the music. Is that all right? Sounds perfect. Thank let's you. play track number one. Once again, from uh, Grant, Grant Malloy Smith's CD entitled 
uh, Yellow Trailer. This uh, track is entitled The Boy Who Built the Moon. It's a true story. All right, I want to hear about that, Big Phil, and we'll be right back. <laughs> I've been searching everywhere There's a place but she's not there Lonely lights are way up high They need her and so do I I'm gonna take these hands I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire Into the sky, I'm the boy who built the moon. Take your gloves and steady light, get your boots and pull them tight. There's hats and tools to spare. And breathers full of air There's work for every hand There's more work than we planned And I am gonna take these hands I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire And sleepless nights One million fireflies I'm wishing from afar Here comes the morning star And I I'm gonna take these hands I'm gonna catch the wind and tame the fire And I will shake this land We're back. Once again, you're listening to the Joffa Jazz Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Alvin McKinney, also known as the Prime Minister of Joffa Jazz, and today my guest is, once again, is Mr. Grant Malloy Smith, all the way from uh, Rhode Island, <laughs> by way of Florida and around the world, and by God's grace, he's here today in the studio, here at RMC Studios with us today, uh, promoting his CD, uh, Yellow Trailer. Now, let's go back to the first song. Mm. Uh, how long does it take a woman? I know, excuse me, how long should a woman have to wait? Right, right. Talk about that one, Ant. <laughs> well, I have a little personal experience with that uh, right. since I made my wife. By the way, we just had our 30th anniversary uh, Monday. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank awesome. You. God bless you. For it's, it. it's amazing she had put up with me for 30 minutes, much less 30 years. So <laughs> I'm saying. <it> very, <laughs> but we were going to get married, and then, and then it was my fault that we didn't. And so it took us five years to get married. So we've really been together for 35 years. I mean, even more than that, but at least that long. That's beautiful. Yeah. So that's the story this in the song it's a little tongue in cheek about yeah. it, there's several different vignettes in there in the lyrics about uh, uh, women having you know trying to 
lasso these men into doing the right thing and marrying them. And sometimes <laughs> men, as you know, are a little Drag, bit... Kick, kick it and scream and drag it. I don't want to get married. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> they want to be bachelors forever, but finally you realize your, your life will be better if you connect with somebody. Amen. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I like the song. It's probably the most... Or maybe there's two songs on the album that are very country-like, uh-huh. you know, more so than rootsy. Like that last one was very kind of rootsy and, and even Celtic sounding. It was it's supposed to be. But that's the first song. I heard that. Is uh, very country-like. And there's another one on the record that is too. All right. Yeah. So now, um, tell us a little bit about the song that we just heard. And how did, uh, how, how did it originate? Wow. Well, that's really a good question. Um, I usually write the music first. Mm-hmm. I usually write something. I, I'm fooling around usually with a guitar or something like that. Sometimes mm-hmm. with a piano, but normally the guitar. And I, and I just find something that I like. Mm-hmm. And I feel that there's something in there. And I, then I just keep developing it, and then I write a track, and then I, or, or a, a series of you know, chords. And, and I've written so many songs now, I sort of know what's going to work and what's not going to work right, right. in terms of being a song later. But I also try to write things that I would never write chord changes that I wouldn't all that that don't seem normal mm-hmm. because then that's going to challenge me to write a melody that's more interesting later and sometimes I know the melody in some parts of it but I because I feel it at that moment other times I don't right. so normally I create the the base of the track first and I and I record that mm-hmm. only because I can't remember it all later <laughs> and then I kind of piece it together right. and I get it I get all the pieces in, in in order the way I like them and then I sit down and I'll and the, what I really spend the most time on is writing the lyrics I think for me, that's the more that's the most important part for me of a song. I mean, the song really is just the words set against the melody. Mm-hmm. It's not the arrangement or the chords. I mean, right. that's all good stuff to have. But the song literally is what you copyright is the lyrics against a melody line. Right. So I spend a lot of time on the lyrics. A lot of time. I'll spend sometimes days to get it get it right. You know, hours at a time, and then finally arrive at the melody and lyrics that I want. I write the melody and the lyrics simultaneously mm-hmm. so that they feel right together and it feels natural. It shouldn't feel written. It should feel like those words against that melody always were there and I just revealed it. Mm-hmm. Like when they asked Michelangelo, you know, who's the super genius right, right. At, at painting and sculpting, and, and he would take this giant block of granite that was 12 feet high and five feet you know, on each side, mm-hmm. and he would chip away at it, and after three months he had unbelievable statues that we still look at today in awe. And somebody said to him famously, how do you know how to do that? How can you chip away and then create that, what looks like a human being under there? Uh-huh. And he said, it's easy. I just chip away everything that doesn't look like what I have in my mind. <laughs> so it's not that easy, but I'm not Michelangelo. <laughs> but, so I spend a lot of time at that. Chipping I, away. I tell you what, I enjoy listening to your lyrics. So I would say that you uh, have really, I don't want to call you a wordsmith, but you have spent a lot of time thought provoking, toiling over what it is that you want to say. So by the time that you have put it down on your CD, it's very clear. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, I hear a lot of lyrics today, they don't have the depth of thought. So you really, you, you've taken the time and the care to express whatever it is that God has put in your mind or in your heart. Mm. So when it comes down, when it comes out on the wax, mm. <laughs> it's like mm. a pearl. Well, I, try, I, I try or aspire to write songs like, like the American Songbook, the great songs like that. I uh-huh. aspire to write that. I don't achieve that, but I, that's what I go for. <laughs> or great songs like Yesterday. Yeah. Or somewhere over the rainbow. These are like classic, timeless. perfect little yeah. timeless songs that are. There's not a single extra word in any of those great songs, and there's no no words missing somehow. And there's not that many words, but they're just. It's like Beethoven's Ninth. Da, 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 right. da, da, it's only four notes, right. but it's exactly the right four notes played the right way. So yeah. that's what I try to achieve anyway. And if I think if you set that lofty goal. It'll, it'll just help, it'll keep you on the right course for mm-hmm. improving. Um, but, well, I want to get back to your music, but, but I, I'm just led to touch on the music business industry side for a minute. You seem to be very well acclimated into that, and you really understand what you're doing. So for the upcoming artist, uh, what words of wisdom can you share regarding uh, writing music, uh, connecting with the right people, 
things of that nature. He, I think you understand where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, right. So there's the whole artistic side. Mm -hmm. You could write the greatest songs in the world, but then you have to connect them. If you want to get them out there, you have to then connect them to the world, which means you have to connect yourself to the world in some way. Mm -hmm. For me, what really changed my whole life in a very positive way was when um, I had a publicist years ago, in fact I still, I still work with him, mm -hmm. who told me, I'm going to put your record in for the Grammys. And I was like, how can you do that? I can't, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, a famous multi-million selling, I didn't know anything about the Grammys. <laughs> I thought you had to already be giant and famous and sell a trillion records. Right. And he said, no, no, you can, I can, he was a member, he could, I can put, I can submit your record. Mm -hmm. So the long story short is that I became a member of the Recording Academy, mm -hmm. which I strongly recommend if you can if you can do it. NARAS? Um, NARAS, right, okay. the, the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. Right. It's the Recording Academy, a.k.a. the Grammys, uh -huh. with the little R and the circle <laughs> after it, which right, you right, must right. not forget to do. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm very happy and proud to be a member of, of the Academy because it's changed my life in the sense that, and by the way, I'm not hobnobbing with uh, Beyonce and Prince. I'm not at that level. <laughs> I'm, I'm at the indie level where I have hundreds of great friends who are all like me are all on the path trying to get somewhere mm -hmm. and, and enjoying our music and trying to you know make trying to be better mm -hmm. as artists mm -hmm. and we get together and we do fun things we get together you know not just at the Grammys but each there are 10 chapters of the Academy around the country uh, I haven't been to all of them but I've been to a lot of them okay and I have lots of friends in all of them and it's really changed my life because I've met so many people I've worked with them from all over the world not just in the US but mostly the US and uh, if you can get involved in that, if you have enough credits, you know, uh, I think it's only 12, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think it's 10. 10? So if you have 10 tracks that have been really released, mm -hmm. you know, for sale, for real, then you can join. Right. And then you can start think, to be part of the community. I could be wrong. Either way, I'm one, I'm, I'm one master short of being an actual voting member. Mm -hmm. I'm a member, yep. not a voting member. Right. If I need one more track. Sure. Matter of fact, um, David Longoria just helped me get that. So I, I, I recorded one of his vocal tracks oh, yeah. on that song, uh, we, we, are we Are One. one. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I have the We Are One <laughs> bracelet Oh, right there. I have to go back and get one of those. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you can have this one. I'll get another one from That's okay. You'll be probably leaving soon. I, I'm, he's released. Not to be, but they must drop me yes. in. on traffic. Yep. Yep. So it, it, just connecting with other musicians, even if you're in the in the hinterlands and it, it typically a problem is, like I live in Rhode Island, so what's in Rhode Island in terms of the music business? Mm-hmm. Nothing. It's in New York, it's mm -hmm. in Nashville, it's in L.A. That's right. really, th those are the big three places where right, right. the business is. Right. But that doesn't mean that, that you're out also, of luck. Uh, also Atlanta now. Sure, in there the, are, the exact, places, the Miami up, for, right. uh, you know, the Latin kind of music is right. really, really strong. Of course, Memphis is a great blues place. Mm -hmm. New Orleans is a huge music city. Exactly. Austin. Right. South by Southwest. Kansas right. City is still known for blues. Kansas yeah. City, and you're right, the other blues on the other side of Missouri. <laughs> so... Yeah, you can get, but you can join the academy and you can become part of the, uh, the scene. All, and they have, there are chapters in Atlanta and Miami and Washington, D.C. and Philly and New York and Chicago and, and uh, uh, the Pacific Northwest up there in Seattle and mm -hmm. San Francisco and L.A. A so you, big, A lot of big, great cities. Yeah, you, can, you can join and, and start to take part and meet other people. And mm -hmm. that'll help you because then you'll learn, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a lot from them. Wonderful. That's another one of your tracks. Let's go to... It's your birthday. This is track two, once again, from the CD entitled Yellow Trailer by our wonderful guest today, Mr. Grant My Lord Smith. It's your birthday and everyone wants to be near you. So why are you crying? Your mother's outside and she'll hear you It's your birthday But you don't even seem any older You're a sensible girl But you carry the world on your shoulder So unlock the door And everyone sent 
you a message I've been here for hours My paycheck in flowers It's impressive It's your birthday You're wondering why bad things happen But who gives a damn I'm starting the van Let's get cracking So unlock the door Once again, that was It's Your Birthday by Mr. Grant Malloy Smith. I feel like it was my birthday. That was <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Even though it was in August, I'll, 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 a belated present. It's a belated so. happy birthday. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mine was also in August. What day is yours? 21st. I'm the 28th. August 6th. Wow, we're all <laughs> August babies. <laughs> August 6th? Mm -hmm. Wow. All three of us. All right. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> awesome. Uh, now, we were talking about the business. Let's go back to your music. How did, first of all, the Dust Bowl, Mm. That, that, is that your upcoming CD? Yes, it is. It's coming out next next June. All right, next June. Yeah. You know, how did, well, how did I get the idea? Yes. And it was really a lucky thing. I was writing a song. I wanted to write, for the next record, I wanted it to go back a little bit rootsier, like old style songs. Uh -huh. And the way songs used to be before the chorus was invented, uh, it would, the songs were like just a long verse. And at the end of the verse would be the, the title of the song. And that's the part you remember. That was sort of like the hook. Right, right. You know? And, and then there would be a, uh, maybe an instrumental, then the same verse would, it was just the verse, 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 verse with a line at the end. And mm -hmm. I wanted to write a song like that. And the pattern I had in mind was like a ding, 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 and I've done this and I've done that, and I've been here and I've done this, and I've been there and I've done that, but I've never, and then I, and then I just came, it just came out, I've never seen the rain. Huh. And I, now a lot of times I come up with lines and I'm gonna replace them later, but they just fit that spot at that moment. And, uh, but that, try that, as that I might. That makes you think. Right. I'm, you don't, you never seen the rain. Right, never seen the rain. <laughs> it didn't make any sense. And there's a Creedence Clearwater song that, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? It's uh -huh. a similar title, uh -huh. completely different mm -hmm. type of song. But So I wanted to replace that line because I couldn't figure out what sense it would make and because of the other song of a similar title. But try as I might, I couldn't. And so finally I just had to make that title make sense. Uh -huh. And I kept, and so then I started thinking, how, how does that make sense? Everyone's seen the rain. Uh, if you if you if you can't see it all, then you've then you've never seen anything. So what difference does it make that you haven't seen the rain? Maybe you've been in jail, but if you weren't in jail forever. You saw the rain before you went to jail. But finally, I realized <laughs> maybe it's just like an exaggeration. Like you uh -huh. haven't seen the rain in a really long time, uh -huh. like during a drought. And then I all of a sudden the light bulb went off, and I remembered from school something about this dust bowl that happened in the 1930s in the in the Great Plains of America, where the, there was a huge drought that happened. Mm -hmm and they were over farming and they plowed up too much of the prairie and then the drought happened also the Great Depression happened just okay. to make it even more fun oh yeah and then of course these enormous dust storms came and these people that were trying to farm and they couldn't grow anything the corn was growing up three feet high instead of you know eight wow. feet high and That's amazing. animals were dying by the millions it was really uh, you know the worst thing we've ever experienced in this country environmentally mm. absolutely breathtaking but I at that moment I didn't remember much about the Dust Bowl from mm -hmm. school because it was so many thousands of years ago that I learned about it but I started looking on the internet and a, a second light bulb went off and I said I have to make the whole record about this 
and make it be like a theme album mm -hmm. and tie all the songs to this place and time of the 1930s because it has a beginning and a middle and an end like a movie. Right. You know, right. at the beginning, everything's great. People are making lots of money plowing the prairie, which had never been done before. Mm -hmm. And then it turned bad when it stopped raining. And the, then the dust storms came because the, of the over plowing and plowing the wrong direction. And all the, all the things that were done wrong, mm. compounded by the drought. <laughs> and you know, the wind would pick up millions of tons of dirt and, uh, and just create these enormous dust clouds. Uh, but also, the, what really got me to do it was that I realized that you know, Woody Guthrie is very well known for having written about the Dust Bowl. He was like the original troubadour traveling the whole country became quite famous writing songs about the Dust Bowl in that area. He came from Oklahoma which was the epicenter of the Dust Bowl. Mm -hmm. And because of him he took this roots music which was really a local or regional music at that time that people played on their back porches but wasn't known nationally, and he made it known nationally. He, he is the progenitor of Roots music in terms of being a national, nationally known form. So out of respect for him and what he did, I thought, it's just natural. This whole album has to be, and it's called Dust Bowl, and it has to be all about that. It's not a documentary. It's meant to be a record you listen to and enjoy, mm -hmm. but I just set all the songs in that, in that time and place. So by the way, the album was uh, more than half written at that moment. And I threw every song away except that one. And I started all over again. <laughs> and I wrote all new songs. All right. Just one second. I forgot to mention that uh, if you'd like to speak to Mr. Grant Malloy Smith, please call us here at Studio A, Rockford Media Center. The number is there, code 323-965-1600. Again, 323-965-1600 to speak to Mr. Grant Malloy Smith. Now. Uh, you said something earlier, and I want to get back to it because my father w was raised on the farm, mm. so I know a little bit about that. Mm. <laughs> and also, he would grow things in our, in our home, you know, mm -hmm. uh, greens, right. corn, right. potatoes, um, other things. You said plowing in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us what that means? Sure. Well, the, because of the way the earth spins, the winds move west to east. That's correct. That's the prevailing winds. And yes. if you if you plow all your furrows east to west, you're creating, a, and then you have high winds, you create a situation where just, the winds can just pick up the dirt and spread it at, at will. It's better to plow in different directions, oh, not well, just all east to west. But more, more, more likely north, north to south. North to south, right. I get it. Mix okay. it up. And also to plant tree breaks. Well, back then they called them shelter belts back in, in the 1930s. And uh, after, the, after this started to happen, the Dust Bowl happened, the government sent in all kinds of people to try to plant these rows of trees to break the wind, you know, between between farms and between mm -hmm. between pastures and fields. All right. To try to stop all that wind. The wind picked up so much dirt, you know, sometimes it would it would raise up so much so many tons of dirt it would actually rain or snow the red Oklahoma dirt as far east as Washington DC and Boston. You gotta be kidding. Nope. That is amazing. That kind of, that type of wind current. Yeah. Now, uh, but LaRon, can you put back up his CD cover? I want people to see this photo for a second. Uh, you were just mentioning that, that this boy is standing on top of four feet of dirt, of yeah, dust. Yeah, 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 probably at can least. You, can you explain that to the audience, please? Sure. Well, these dust storms, storms came across the prairie. They, they looked like giant walls of black dirt. And if you, if you see the movie Interstellar, which came out last year or maybe early this year, they show that happening again in the future. And they show and they recreate, you know, using CGI, what a dust storm really looked like. Hmm. And uh, some we have lots of photos today that show, but no video really, like they can create in the movies. But they would move so much dirt that hmm. it would you could be when they rolled in, you could be in your own front yard, and suddenly it would become black as midnight, and you wouldn't be able to find your own door, and the the dirt could pile up several feet high. That's people amazing. couldn't. People, you know, got emphysema. They got all kinds of respiratory problems from breathing it in. Right. It wasn't just breathing it in once, it was like for years. Oh my goodness. And you know, kids wow. died, old people, you know, the weak were the right. first ones right. to perish from right. all that stuff. And it plus, was plus back then, plus back then, I thought I didn't catch up, but uh, I think back then they didn't have the type of medical care that we have now. Right, and they were out in the, the middle medicines. of nowhere, some of them, they could be an eight hour, you know, drive behind a horse to get to a doctor, you know, and. And, and possibly not make it. Not make it. That's amazing. Mm. Thank you for sharing that knowledge. He was sta standing on four feet of dust. Yeah, I think so. It's something like that. And that was not uncommon back in those days. Wow. Let's take a short commercial break and hear from our sponsors, Pitbull Energy Drink. And we'll be, we'll be right, right back with more from Mr. Grant Malloy-Smith. 
Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. Once again, you're listening to the Joppa Jazz Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Alza McKinney. And we are on to have Mr. Grant Malloy Smith here today, American Roots songwriter, singer, and recording artist here today. Uh, now, how shall I address you? Just Grant. It's fine. Uh, just Grant. Just like my mama did. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Although she would use my middle name, uh, all my names, when she was maybe a little bit upset with me. <laughs> so I liked it when she just used one name. <laughs> I think I know your mother. <laughs> well, I think our mothers knew each other. I think that's, that's, that's the best way to say it. <laughs> collaborated. <laughs> Alvin, keep it. Oh, yeah, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm, 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 all three names I'm, I'm, came I'm, I'm, out. Done it now. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody else. <laughs> and about to blame but me. Right, she narrowed it right down to you. <laughs> um, let's go back in time just a little bit. Hmm. First of all, at what age did you start performing music? And uh, did, are you from a musically inclined family? I have a lot of that. My mother was a really good uh, pianist and okay. a singer. And she she did that a lot when she was younger, and she always loved music. She encouraged me to do it. Mm-hmm. I, I when I was a kid, the Beatles were the biggest thing in the whole world. And, uh, of course, I wanted to be one of the Beatles, although I was only five years old, but I still thought I could be one. That's a good dream. <laughs> <laughs> you could be the sixth Beatle. You could be the... Bill, 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 Bill Preston was the fifth Beatle. Right, right. <laughs> right. I could be the, the little blonde kid from Florida Beatle. <laughs> but, uh, Beatles uh, 2.0, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> but I also had a grandmother from Kentucky, and she instilled in me a lot of appreciation for the rootsy kind of music. She liked that stuff. She liked the bluegrass. She liked kind of old style country music from you know her her generation mm-hmm. that that kind of stuff and and she played that stuff for me and she encouraged me to like it now of course as a child I didn't like it I wanted to be the Beatle I wanted to be a rock star and you know I I said oh that's interesting quaint old stuff but you know I want to be a long-haired spandex wearing electric guitar <laughs> fire breathing dragon up there you know, and have <laughs> girls by the millions and uh it but was only a those, th- those things do exist, by the way. <laughs> <They do> exist. <laughs> for for some, right? For some, not for me. Amen. So, um, some years ago, I decided to. People were always telling me that my songs, even though my songs were more like in a, in a pop and rock uh, kind of uh, genre, that that they were, they told stories, and that they, 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 everyone told me you should do country music, mm-hmm. and I always said country music. I, I'm not going to do country music because I want to be a giant rock star. And Mm -hmm. then one day I realized I'm never going to be a giant rock star, but maybe those people are right. Maybe I should do something. I don't want to do plain country music, but Mm -hmm. I want to do something that's more rootsy and real, like telling real, like the real stories like I was telling, but telling telling them with less electric stuff and more acoustic stuff. Mm -hmm. So that really brings the songs and the the lyrics out. And it's more fitting my age too. I'm not 20 years old anymore and I can't jump around and might break a hip or something at this point. So <laughs> or dislocate something. <laughs> dislocate something or right. whatever. Have right. a leg fall off in the middle of a show. Yeah, yeah, it's always I've, embarrassing. I haven't done any splits in a while myself, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I switched you know, so, several albums ago to this kind of stuff, and uh, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever look back. This is, I think I found what I was really supposed to be doing all along. I would say yes. Um, I had a lot of things in my, in my mind that I was thinking about at the time. I wanted to share this. Uh, as I was sharing with you earlier, before uh, uh, outside the studio, um, country western music or music of this particular music genre, so to mm-hmm. speak, it's not, not not necessarily my quote unquote t- cup of tea. Uh, but uh, I remember watching Hee Haw, and I, I used to love Hee Haw. That, that was hilarious <laughs> to me, you know. Yeah. You know uh, 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 Glenn, mm-hmm. 
Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Campbell. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he was, and, he was great. He was an and, uh, amazing who, player. Who, 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 Roy on, Clark. On, Roy Clark on, on yeah, banjo. Buck Owens was on there. I mean, there was a whole – it was Minnie Pearl with the hat with all the price tags. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a great show back in the day. And then uh, several years ago when I was on the road, I went back home to Memphis. And the, guy, and, and the band that I was touring with at the time said, well, let's go check out this country western club. I said, I don't want to go in there. You know? Yeah. I said, yeah, I'll get them like it. So it was, since it was a predominantly white uh, Caucasian group, I said, all yeah. right, I'll go. And so I'm listening to the music. Now, by this time of country, has t this is like uh, the mid early to mid-90s. Okay. And country started crossing over, if you yeah. may recall. It became more pop. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm hearing the music now. I'm like, hey, this is Got a nice little beat. Yeah. So, all right. I, I'm going to like this. Yeah. Then they started singing. I went, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that twang in my ear. <laughs> I'm just being honest and being truthful, you know. That's fine. But I've grown. Now, now watch this. <laughs> the God that, I, that we know, love, and serve is also a God of, of pranks. <laughs> I remember one day, it must have been close to 20 years ago, he gave me a country western song. Huh? I said, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? Yeah. So God is just showing me that I'm in all things. Mm -hmm. uh, God is in country. He's in blues. Mm -hmm. He's in jazz. He's in R&B. He's in pop, funk, blues, alternative, rock, <laughs> classical. Mm -hmm. Why? Because his children are there. Right. And, they, and he takes them with him. Right. <laughs> That's how we're expressing what we got from him. Exactly. And all things come from him, the creator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. And, but, no. but I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, for me, a lot of today's most popular country music is not my, f not my favorite either. Because to me, uh, we were talking a few minutes ago about the lyrics, mm -hmm. and I, f I find if you listen to today's really super popular country music, it's, um, it's, it's very much like pop rock music mm -hmm. with a banjo, maybe, or a twang. Mm -hmm. And it's not really what I would call country music anymore. Oh, pure, and everybody pure, knows pure, that. Pure country, yeah. I'm not saying anything the kind of, that the people kind of don't know. They kind of commercialize it, would you say? Yeah, they made it really ma commercial. Mainstream, maybe, I don't right. know. Right. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with being commercialized, but the, the thing that does bother me mm -hmm. are the lyrics. The lyrics, I think, go out of their way to be clever, and they are, mm -hmm. but there's no there there. There's no real meaning. Not in all lyrics. There are still people writing great songs. Don't mm -hmm. get. I'm not painting a, everybody with the same brush. But there's, know, no, no, no. but there's a lot of lyrics that are entirely predictable and just one cliche after another. We, uh, and there's a particular. Um, we, we we call it bubble, bubble gum, bubble gum music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now Lorado over here cracking up, but not to be confused with bubble gump music. That's right, right, no, 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 no. That's for shrimp. No, no. <laughs> now what we're saying is that there's no depth. Right. To the to, to the lyrics, it's just simple. Yeah, it's commercial. It's like written by a focus group, <laughs> right. marketing team. Right, right. we gotta have and, and, uh, they, the, and they can sell it. We gotta have mud on the tires. We gotta have a girl with cut off jeans. We right. have to have a bottle of whiskey on the bar. Right, we gotta have a stool. We gotta have all these images. Right, because country music lyrics all have to be images, which which is fine. Mm -hmm. But we need to we need to uh, ask more of ourselves when we're writing lyrics. And you know what, uh, Stevie Wonder and Smokey Robinson, when they were when they received their awards, basically said the same thing in a very kind way. Yeah. I thought that they spanked the younger generation, mm. but they, certainly they had the right and the authority to say that because they have the track I, record to say such things. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> you should listen to those guys. Exactly. These, these are the <laughs> elders <laughs> of, of our time, yeah. and they've been out there uh, for a lifetime, mm -hmm. and they have the right to say we're off the path. Sure. Let's bring it back to some sense of truth and right. love, right? And get rid of some of this violence and, and derogatory uh, uh, verbiage right. regarding our women. Well, Speaking I, of I that, I can't tolerate that at all. You know what? We're almost out of time, but we're going to play something in a little bit. But uh, one of your main passions is for women's rights. Mm -hmm. Please share uh, with the audience why that is. Well, because I have a mother and sisters and a daughter mm -hmm. and they're half the population of the world and the idea of treating them badly abusing them kidnapping them raping them selling them into slavery uh really sounds like the worst thing that men when i say men i mean males mm -hmm. could possibly do it's sinful and wrong and, and we have to stop I mean, we have to stop at it it's it's as, from as small a thing as I shouldn't say small, but it, it, it covers a broad gamut of things. Yes. Like, for example, over a 
last year over in Africa where all those all those young women, like hundreds of them, got kidnapped. Two hundred, yes. And in Nigeria, most of them never found. Right? I mean, to me, that's a tragedy of epic proportions, yes. and we need to really think about that and do something about it. Yes. And from our species, they were chosen by God or created by God to give life here on earth. Right. Why do we not? We as men should be the protectors. That's who God made us to be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's your mother you're selling into slavery. Yeah. You sister, were born from auntie, a woman. Your grandmother. You, you can't yeah, abuse right. women. That's insane. <laughs> exactly. It's, it, it is literally insane because you would be ruining, you'd be destroying all of humanity. If you if you did it to all women, there would be no more human beings in 40 years. They'd all be gone. That's amazing. And so it's crazy. To me, people say, why are you such an advocate for women? And I'm like, how, how could you how could you not how, be? Exactly. You, know? you, took the, you took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. How could you not? Yeah. And being a mama's boy, I'm proud of it. Hello, mama. <laughs> my parents, by God's grace, they celebrated their 55th wedding anniversary, wow. June 19th. And uh, Congratulations to them. I, I, I thank God for them. And they continue to pray for me and support me in every way. You know, and I, I love them dearly. Amen. That's great. That's great. I'll tell you what, let's like take a commercial break, and then we're going to play something together, and then we'll come right back. Is that all right? Oh, that's great. So once again, this is from uh, our sponsor, Pitbull Energy Drinks, and then I'm going to play something with Mr. Grant Malloy Smith. It's gonna be fun. Are you a diabetic? Need some energy? Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Need to quench your thirst? Try Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, the only energy drink named suitable for diabetics by the American Diabetic Association. And it's now available with no calories, no carbs, no sugar, and no fat, and a smooth, natural blend of energy, vitamins, and minerals. Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink is the healthiest, best-tasting energy drink around. For more information and online ordering with free shipping, please visit hiphopbev.com. Remember, Pitbull Sugar-Free Energy Drink, suitable for diabetics, great for everyone. Should we go? Yes, sir. All right, I was just messing around. Here we go. <laughs> this is a song called Old Black Roller. Old Black Roller. It's uh, it's Old Black Roller is what the people back then called the dust storms that rolled across the prairie so in this song the character i'm singing through mm -hmm. is singing to the the dust cloud as it comes in and he's he's treating it like it's a monster like it's alive coming in to you know wreck havoc on on them so let's let's have some fun with it all right
right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you're great. You're, you're so good on that thing. Once again, everyone, that was Mr. Grant Malloy Smith singing Old Black Roller. Now, I was mentioning earlier, I said, was that a tornado? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a, a, a better understanding, but basically a, a, a black dust. Big, was, big dust cloud that would just roll across and was a mile high, it seemed. And it covered up the sky. It made day into night. That's it made serious. day into night. That's amazing. And people couldn't keep the dirt out of their homes. There was just dirt. They called it dust, but it was really dirt coming in through every... Everywhere, every crack, every, you know, you just could not keep your house clear of it. There's a line in the wow. song like, dust might choke us and that kind of thing, and, uh -huh. and uh, raining down pneumonia. A lot of people got pneumonia and all these respiratory things, and it was really, really devastating. It was the worst environmental disaster we've ever had in the country. And it was only 80 years ago. People, That's amazing. it doesn't seem like that long ago, but our, our grandparents, you know, we're living at that time. Even my wife's mother was in Missouri, not mm -hmm. too far away from there, mm -hmm. as a little, little child. It's amazing. So, so um, the image that I'm, that I'm sort of getting in my head is almost like a, those Mad Max movies, you know? Yeah. Kind of like very dusty, yeah. deserty, nothing living. Right. A lot of, uh, it was. A, a lot of dead vegetation, you know? Yeah, and animals by the millions lying there dead and disintegrating. For lack of water. And yes. Yeah. Food. That's amazing. You know, millions of people came out here to California. Bakersfield is well known, well known as the main hub where a lot of people came in. I think there's probably a train line that came in there. Hmm. And uh, I think several, they called them Okies, and it was not a term of endearment back uh -huh. then. Okay. Uh, but everybody from that whole region was called an Okie, <laughs> even whether they were from <laughs> Oklahoma or not. They just got that, they got that stamp. <laughs> oh darn it! Here comes another another train load of Okies looking for work, and there was you know millions of people just w looking for work everywhere. And it was a real tough time in our country. Well, I certainly admire your, your knowledge of history and uh, of the music industry. And I certainly appreciate your, your thoughtfulness for, 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 for lyrical, lyrical content. But I want to thank you as, as an, from artist to artist for taking the time to perfect your thoughts, your vision. Uh, your ideas, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> and you've been a wonderful, delightful guest. I want to close out on. Uh, let's see. Let's go to track number nine, uh, Brother, Brother Laurent. And uh, we're going to come back, but this is called "Hold On to Moments." Once again, from his CD entitled "Yellow Trailer" by Mr. Grant Malloy Smith. <laughs> moments hold on my dear time has a habit of stealing each year hold on to moments treat them like gold we'll need to have them one day when we're old You can lie right here And I will touch your hair Like a hundred times before You may need to cry And I will dry your tears It's what I'm living for Again, you've been listening to the wonderful music of Mr. Grant Malloy Smith. He's been a great guest today. Uh, Brother Grant, where, pe where can people find your music and what is your website? It's my name, Grant Malloy Smith, and there's li just a little hyphen between Grant Malloy and Smith, and Malloy only has one L. So if you go there, there's a link, links there to everywhere where you can find me on iTunes and, and uh, Instagram and YouTube and all those places where you can hear music. And right on my top page of my website, you can listen, you can watch some videos and hear some music right there too. 
Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, and you have a, a, a great website, by the way. Well, thank you. Yeah, I really like it. Thank you. <laughs> so Dust Bowl's coming out in June on Roven Records, so keep an eye out for that one. All right, we'll have to have you back. Thank you. Is that all right? We're happy to do that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much for coming thank to you. Uh, on, the, on the Joppa Jazz Show. Blessings to you and your audience. Thank you, sir. And uh, just so you know, in case you missed it because you're working or traveling and you're not able to see the show today, it will be uploaded on YouTube, and then I'm going to send him the link, Mr. Uh, Grant Malloy Smith, that is, and uh, he'll send it to you uh, via email as well as you can find it on his Facebook page. He's also on Twitter, and I'm, I, 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 where else are you at there? Oh, everywhere. Oh, yes. Vine, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, all, all those things. Reverb Nation? I think I Reverb Nation, right, definitely, right. yep. yep. <laughs> Sonic Dudes, uh, 100 if, other ones. And if, if they would like to contact you to book you, where can they, uh, how can they email yep. possibly? Yeah, right on my website there's a place you could, you could book me. There's oh, also wonderful. a place for fans to go and register to be a fan, and I send them autograph photos. Uh, um, and there's a place for people that want to book me to send a different kind of message. Wonderful. And once again, I'm coming very, very soon. Uh, his CD is entitled uh, Dust Bowl, but this is the CD that we play from today, and it's entitled Yellow Trailer. <laughs> and I love this. I love this photo here in the back. It's, it's, I love that hat. <laughs> I might have to go find see if I can go. You got to take me to show me where I can go buy one of those. Right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> once again, you've been listening to the Joffrey Jazz Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Alvin McKinney, also known as the Primus of Joffrey Jazz. I think I, uh, I've been able to come back safely from Dubai. God has blessed me. Please keep your, pray, uh, your, your prayers up for the country of France. I've been blessed to it for there for many, many years, over the past 15 years. And so our hearts and prayers go out to all of you, uh, especially for those who have lost family and friends and loved ones. Amen. Uh, and lastly, tomorrow, by, God, by God's grace, I'll be performing uh, for the Regional Black Chamber of Commerce, 7 p.m. Uh, give me a moment to find the information here. Here we go. It's the 16th annual Small Business Gala Awards Dinner of Recognitions. Uh, the, the, the place is called the Prestigious City Club. The address is 555 South Flower Street uh, on the 51st floor. Uh, it's going it's to be a star study event. The reception starts at 6 p.m. and the gala starts at 7 p.m. with dinner at, to my understanding. For more information, please go to their website, Regional Black Chamber, Black Chamber SFV. Dot info, or you can call 818-464-3484. Again, 818-464-3484. And lastly, a shout out to all of my endorsers. Uh, Coward Saxophones, distributed by the, bu the Buffet Group USA. Also, Beats and Mouthpieces, Legia Reads, Audio Deck and Microphones, and Core Keyboards. God bless you all, and thank you for your wonderful support and your excellent products. Once again, I'm Dr. Alf McKinney, and you listen to the Joe Jazz Show. Uh, God's grace. See you next week. Stay prayerful. You're drunk but not on liquor Time heals but love is quicker But he don't show it You're brave But you don't know it Plaid shirts and sideways glances You like the way he dances
Girl. 